Sometimes I'm an idiot. So when we did the accuracy test on the Tormach, we made this part and I measured it with a set of calipers and then a mic micrometer. And hey, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's a much better way to measure things more accurately and less expensive. You need a couple things to buy them, but if you're a machinist or you do any of this stuff, I absolutely recommend you put this stuff on your keep an eye out for it list, Christmas list, you know, auction list, or, or just buy them new. We're gonna use a larger granite plate you see here. We got this at auction for 100 bucks. Yes, that's a good deal, but we've seen them again multiple times. You can also buy these smaller ones um, online for not too much money and they'll do just fine. Links are below. You need what's called a, um, a height gauge right here or a surface gauge. Buy this used on eBay. Absolutely. You can buy one new if you want, but I would say buy this used. You need a dial indicator. Now we're going to get controversial. This happens to be a good one, a brown and sharp. In my opinion, you don't need to buy a good one or an expensive one. They have these for sub $10 on Enco, eBay, Chinese, etc. And here's why. What we're going to do today is we're not going to measure height. We're going to measure relative distance to the gauge blocks. That's the key. I don't care really what the height is. I care again, testing the two differences. The cheap dial indicators or test indicators will do just fine. Then of course you need the gauge blocks. We bought these new, these are Shars. They're fine. Look, are they gonna, they're, you know, this is all a question of what you wanna get out of it. So we think this is supposed to be an inch and a half. So we'll grab the one inch and we'll grab the half inch. Here's the cool thing about gauge blocks. You know they're accurate because you bought them hardened in ground and, and again, subject to the quality that you bought. I'm fine with these for what we do. But you also know that they're accurate and clean if they ring together. So if you see, you hold those together, look at that. Isn't that freaking awesome? It's not just the small ones either. If I take this four inch, I take this three inch, as long as the surfaces are clean, which is important because that means you're gonna get accurate height. If you do this, how cool is that? You can, it's, a, it's the coolest feeling. Um, we, we actually tried to make one in a video, this 107, and I was proud of how we did. It doesn't ring together. So that's on our list to redo and do it correctly. So we've got the one inch and the half inch, ring them together here, and let's see what we get. We're gonna lower the surface gauge down, and what I like about these is they've got this knob on the back. So you can see, as we start to lower it down, we can just go ahead and get our test indicator set at zero. Now, you basically want the indicator tip to be as close to parallel to this top as possible. Here we're just comparing two things, so it actually isn't as important, but what'll happen is you'll get, you'll get sign errors the more tipped it is relative to the distance it's moving. So keep it, see how it's basically almost flat in line. Now here's what, you know, this is very sensitive stuff, by the way, and one of the things I'll mention is it's the quality of all of your tools. It's the humidity and temperature in the room, the cleanliness of your surface plate. All that stuff can compound and add up. But if you're attention, if you have attention to detail, you can actually do a pretty darn good job with, again, some pretty inexpensive tools measuring some pretty crazy distances. So if I slide this back and forth, that is freaking cool to me. It doesn't move. Now the real question is if I take it off and come back on, will it repeat? And you can see, oops, it doesn't quite repeat perfectly. Each tick here is half a thou though, and we're talking about, I mean, less than a, far less than one fifth of that distance. So that's pretty, I mean, half a thou alone is about one eighth the thickness of a sheet of printer paper. So pretty close. So that's at, we know that the height of this indicator right now is at 1.5. So we'll grab our part here, set it on the edge, and just nice and easy, you wanna just slide it over, trying to be as gentle as you can. Now, I'm showing one, two, three, four ticks off. So in theory, that would be two thou, each ticks half a thou. You can, oops, you can accept that as it is, or we can grab some more gauge blocks and see what we get. 
So as you see, we slide across here. We do get slight ripples or variations. That's because it has a slight textured finish to it. Now, when it comes to picking your gauge blocks, you can use this wizard you see here from Little Machine Shop. It'll help tell you the gauge blocks you need to stack up to your height. I'm gonna grab a couple here. So we're gonna use a 0 0.1003, a 0 0.148, you know, again, ring them together, quarter inch and one inch. That comes out to um, 17 thou under 1.5. Um, so that would be one point, yeah, one point, or sorry, 17 thou under our part dimension. So what we'll do is, Okay, you can see we've got that pretty darn good there. I'll check it once to make sure it repeats pretty decent. Okay, and knock on wood. Pretty darn close. Yeah, there you can see we get some, you know, this is, I've got to be very careful with how I hold this part um, and measure. And, but that's, again, pretty darn close. You can obviously also check squareness this way, which can be really helpful. And there's a lot of ways you can get creative. So just a quickie, folks, but use your, you know, be creative, think outside the box, although this is pretty standard stuff for, for in terms of machinist's world. Um, but it's just so cool because, again, you're using inexpensive things that are bonkers accurate. Really, really cool stuff. So take care, folks. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. See you soon.